What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Wednesday, April 3rd, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy Newsbeat Stand Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, Mexico curbs oil exports. Next up, in a two part uh, 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 little uh, uh, cost fund, coal phase out. Germany shuts down 15 coal fired power plants. Uh oh. Next up, the cost of electrifying commercial truck fleet is $1 trillion. And then finally, in the news segment, U.S. shale drillers to produce Permian drilling emissions increase reliability. With nuclear reactors, you got to love to see this. Stu will then toss it over to me. I will quickly cover what happened in the oil and gas markets today. We saw natural gas prices spike a little bit, but oil trading at at, at four to five month highs, sitting at eighty five, eighty four. I will then quickly cover what the API thinks the EIA's crude oil inventory will be. You'll hear that at ten thirty. And then Schlumberger dives in and goes ahead and does a little bit of an M and A deal. We will cover all that in a bag of chips, folks. But before we do that, as always, I am Michael Tanner, joined by Stuart Turley. I hope you're having a great day. You go ahead and kick us off. Hey, let's go down to our uh, buddies down in Mexico. Uh, no habla oil is what I think the title of the thing should be. Uh, Mexico curbs oil exports. Uh, this is pretty darn funny. Uh, the, the export cut coming at a time when OPEC and its allies are already curbing production threatens to drive oil prices up. Oh, JP Morgan and Chase last week warned that global benchmark Brent could hit $100 a barrel. And what we're seeing also this morning was that there was another downstream uh, attack uh, from Ukraine on uh, Russian supplies. So the hoodies and the blowfish over there are also targeting some new activity going on. So the world around production is a little bit dicey. Is Mexico in bricks? Uh, I don't think they are. No, because this is an interesting, you know, I was going to, I mean, this is even more than, in my opinion, an interesting move. Mexico aligning themselves with OPEC and cutting production. It's an interesting, you know, geopolitical chess move. It is. They're tightening even further with Venezuelan exports set to fall after the reinstatement of U.S. sanctions on it. Um Oil could keep rising as Pemex starts commercial operations in the Olmeca refinery known as Dos Bacas uh, with capacity to process 340,000 barrels of crude a day. Yeah. I think it's interesting. Mexico deciding to align themselves with OPEC. It could be a sign of the future and where, you know, how OPEC continues to play a force in what's going on but this is huge because they don't want to sell the um uh mexican crude to the u.s refineries that tells me that they ain't digging the biden administration is what the underlying current of this sort of story is interesting all right what's next let's go to somebody else that does not like biden coal phase out germany shuts down 15 coal-fired power plants this is just in a kind of an amazing story again um, they're bragging that their net zero is actually doing great, Michael. They keep forgetting that they've deindustrialized anything and nothing's being manufactured. Germany's aiming to phase out its coal fire plants by 2030. However, due to the energy crisis, 15 power plants were kept on the grid temporarily to battle surging energy prices as they've stabilized. Germany's decided to shut them down. This is a quote uh, from the Habak told the German press agency, several coal fire power plants that were still on the grid as precautionary measure over the last two years have therefore been sur- uh, superfluous and now can be taken off the grid for good. Hmm. I think it's dumb. Yeah. Well, depending on what they're going to replace it with and what this article conveniently leaves out is what's going to replace this. There's nothing online. Exactly. Uh, Yeah. yeah. Rut row. Well, and so what are you going to return to? You're going to have to buy your gas from somewhere else. You're going to have to do all these things that they claim they don't want to do because they don't want to get in bed with Russia. It's. It's. 
Look over here, but not over here. No, personally, I still think that the war is going to end before per- too long. Um, I think that if they just let them negotiate a deal, it would happen. Let's go to you over there. What's next? Oh, I'd tell them exactly how to how it needs to happen. Cost of electrifying commercial truck fleet is one trillion. This doesn't even include the trucks. <laughs> listen to this article you can't buy this kind of entertainment the charging infrastructure will cost 620 billion according to a new survey from clean freight coalition that's not any of the other stuff that's not the updates to the grid that's nothing I mean, that is just absolutely almost nothing. The study forecast infrastructure build out for the electrification of medium and heavy duty commercial vehicles, exposing what the CFC calls a massive investment gap. <laughs> massive investment gap. Huh. Okay. Uh, I, I think it's interesting. And, you know, let, I love this point down here. For example, you know, diesel trucks, again, you have to replace these trucks too. So it's a trillion on everything but the trucks. Class eight diesel costs about $180,000 compared to the battery truck, which is well over 400000 Exactly. So uh, now the, in, the Porculus Bill or the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, they spent what, uh, $7 billion and got two or three in chargers installed. How in the world are you going to charge these bad dog trucks? You're going to have a boatload of batteries and you're not going to be able to charge them. This is absolutely hilarious. The study found that while medium duty vehicles uh, will face fewer roadblocks, economic and operational constraints make electrification very challenging for the heavy duty segment. I think it just means to be it electrification is tough across the board. Oh, it is tough. I mean, you I could have told you that before we started this segment. Oh, yeah. I just thought it was really pretty funny. There's a couple there in a statement also is clear that an industry with a yearly turnover of about eight hundred billion dollars and a profit margin of around five percent cannot invest six hundred and twenty without financial support in order to get it done. Really? Wow. This is this is like Oklahoma State kind of math here. Wow. Yeah, no kidding. All right. Well, let's let's talk about this last one here. This is a super interesting article. I love this one. And and U.S. shale drillers to reduce Permian drilling emissions, increase reliability with nuclear reactors. This is a really good one. Diamondback, uh, who's a uh, really uh, President uh, Kazvon Hull Olko. Uh, he is developing a advanced fusion reactor, uh, reactor and uh, is in discussions with several other oil companies. I mean, take Chris Wright over there at Liberty uh, Energy with their electric flat frack fleet. They are perfect for small nuclear reactors in the fields. This is a direct quote. Small nuclear reactors could make sense as low cost, low carbon, high reality, uh, reliability, alternative energy source for a company like Diamondback, whose energy needs to continue to increase. Uh, Vant Hoff said by email. Uh, I, I, the Oklo's uh, 15 megawatt system would be fall s- small, uh, far smaller than the conventional reactors used today, which typically produce about a thousand megawatts. Uh, a megawatt is enough to power uh, 200 typical homes. Well, Diamondback, we love them over there. Um, if you're frequent on Twitter, you, you, you'd you know that uh, uh, Diamondback president, Case Van Hoff, he, he loves to, to chop it up on Twitter. Um, I think this is interesting. This is a meeting of the minds to small modular reactors and E&P. You know, I think it's, it's great. Uh, Chris you Wright's are pounding been, heads again. Chris Wright and Doug Sandridge uh, were talking about this, and we were going to have a podcast before we had Doomberg uh, jump in on here. We're going to talk about uh, how oil field service could really benefit from this. Oh, there's if you think about, you know, instead of having to use diesel on these frack, you know, on these on these well pads, you could just throw in a little SMR. 
It's very interesting. Very interesting. I think we're far away from that technology, though. So I'm not going to go so far to say as it's here tomorrow, but it could be here soon. It's going to be here before they electrify the trucks. Yeah. So yeah. It, 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 who what's knows what will happen? What's a few trillion between printed friends? Yeah, no kidding. What else you got? That's it for me. It's off to you. All right. Well, before we do that, guys, we'll go ahead um, and pay the bills here. As always, you can check us out, www.energynewsbeat.com, the best place where all your energy and oil and gas news. Stu and the team do a tremendous job making sure that website stays up to speed. Everything you need to know to be the tip of the spear when it comes to the oil and gas business. Check out the description below for all of the timestamps linked to the articles. Um, you can jump around and take a look at any different segment. Um, you can hit dashboard.energynewsbeat.com, which is our da- our dashboard.energynewsbeat.com excuse me um, and go ahead and check out um, our data news product we uh, love you and any feedback appreciated email the show questions at energynewsbeat.com again www.energynewsbeat.com i mean oil up to 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 you know really 3 to 4 month highs too we're sitting at at 8515 you know peak was a little bit about 8544 um as prices rolled over in in the morning we saw brent all the way up to 8956 um um or about a 1.7% gain on that so absolutely unbelievable crude oil prices having a great great day unfortunately it's 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 off the back of a few things one we've got increased uh, ukrainian attacks going on in rushing energy facilities and the 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 rising tensions in the middle east right now with israel taking out um some iranian generals you know people are starting to get on edge a little bit um you know both those things have kind of taken prices and driven them up not much of domestic activity is really driving this you know all all very much happening um you know we, you you will hear today uh a ministry uh ministerial panel meeting of the OPEC uh, producing countries. Uh, unfortunately, there's probably going to be no change to their oil output policy, according to sources. So probably won't see any movement there. Um, we did see an expansion of, of of Chinese manufacturing data for March that just dropped, which you know gives a, a little bit of a, a, a green light to some of the, the, the demand issues that we could see. You know, we also saw yesterday the API drop um, its crude oil inventory estimates in which uh, over at Cushing, in which you'll see today as you listen to this at 1030. You know, we can go ahead and throw that image up, Miss Producer. You're talking about a negative 2.2 million barrel draw from the Strategic Ooh. Petroleum Reserves or an estimate. So, you know, that'll definitely, you know, definitely bullish on that. And we saw a little bit in the afternoon on Tuesday, a little bit of that that driving upwards and, you know, from a demand, from a price standpoint, considering that, that draw. So um, the only other interesting thing I saw, Stu, is Schlumberger. They jump into the M&A game and go ahead and buy up oil field service company Champion X for $8 billion. Um, you know, the, the underlying deal was an all stock deal, you know, again, all stock deal, you know, gotta love when oil's 85 bucks, you're an, you're an, you're an energy company or an oil field service company. You can use your, you got more purchasing power with your stock because everybody wants it now because you'll go up. So they valued it specifically at about 7.75 billion. Um, you know, it's their second lat, uh, it's their second acquisition in a week, um, from, from Slumberjay, but they, they, they bought an overseas company, Cameron International last week, um, you know, this really comes off the heels of what we saw last year with with Patterson UTI and Next Tier going ahead and announcing their all stock deal um, to 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 scoop it up. You know, now I mean, really, what you're looking at um, is about a 14 percent champion ownership, um, and 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 the rest sitting there with Schlumberger. So it's going to be very interesting uh, to see how this one plays out. Um, it's its biggest purchase since 2016, um, um, which is when they made that. Um, 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 Cameron International deal um, in 2016. They made a little bit of a smaller deal earlier um, last week. You know, they're, they're projecting something pretty crazy. They think they'll give about $7 billion over to shareholders over the next two years, and and and, and their 2024 shareholder turn to target is about $3 billion. So, you know, that's that's not a, it's not a great... Um, a great wow. deal. Market really liked it. Champion shares surged about ten percent on off-market trading uh, prior to that. Um, you know, there's there's a bunch of other nuances in here, um, but you're what we're seeing on the EMP front, guys. You're seeing on the service side, so it's a it's it's a merger merger by death. But but you know, merger by old, death. Companies. That almost sounds like a movie. What's up? Merger by death. That has to be a movie. Let's maybe get we'll, a, maybe we'll Hollywood's start working on an inaugural correct. documentary. 
I love it. Murder by death. Merger by death. Yeah, no kidding. So, well, all right, guys. Well, we'll go ahead and uh, um, let you guys get out of here. Unless, Stu, you got anything else for the crowd? I don't know. It's going to be a fun week. It's going to be a fun week. It's going to be a crazy week. We appreciate everybody who's tuning in. Um, tomorrow will be our last show of the week, and then you'll hear a weekly recap and a bunch of other stuff. But for Stuart Turley, I'm Michael Tanner. We'll see you tomorrow, folks.